Chapter Five of The Adventures of Bindle by Herbert Jenkins. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Don W. Jenkins. Chapter Five, The Gathering of the Bands. From the direction of Putney Bridge, a large crowd was approaching. People were leaning over the sides of omnibuses, staring out of the windows of trams. Boys were whistling and exchanging comments, the purport of which Mr. Hardy could not quite catch. In this new excitement he forgot the alibis, who gradually became absorbed in the growing throng that collected outside the shop. Mr. Hardy gazed at the approaching multitude, misgiving in his soul. He caught a glimpse of what looked like a pineapple walking in the midst of the crowd next he saw a carrot then an orange he turned away blinked his eyes and looked again this time he saw moving in his direction an enormous bean followed by a potato yes there was no doubt about it fruit and vegetables were walking up putney high street as he came nearer he saw that each vegetable was leading a donkey on whose back were two boards meeting at the top thus forming a triangle the base of which was strapped to the animal's back people were pointing to the boards and laughing mr hearty could not see what was written on them the sensation was terrific a group of small boys who had run on ahead took up a position near the door of mr hearty's shop that's him cried one that's napoleon no it ain't said another that's caesar mechanically mr hearty waved the boys away they repeated words that to him were meaningless and then pointed to the approaching crowd mr hearty was puzzled and alarmed look governor there they are shouted one of the boys instinctively mr hearty looked at first he beheld only the donkeys the animated fruit and the approaching crowd then he suddenly saw his own name a motor omnibus intervened a moment later the donkeys and their boards came into full view mr hardy gasped on their boards were ingenious exhortations to the public to support the enterprise of alfred hardy greengrocer of putney fulham and wandsworth mr hardy read as one in a dream alfred hardy the napoleon of greengrocers alfred hardy the caesar of fruiterers alfred hardy the prince of potato merchants hardy's two shilling pineapple try it in your bath hearty's jerusalem artichokes general allenby eats them the germans fight for hearty's brussels sprouts as the six animals filed past mr hearty was conscious that hundreds of eyes were gazing in his direction he read one sign after another as if hypnotized then he read them again scarcely had the donkeys passed him when the pineapple swung round leading his donkey the others immediately followed as they came back on the other side of the way that nearest to mr hardy he had the benefit of reading further details about the wonderful properties of the fruit and vegetables he retailed the second set of exhortations to the housewives of putney ran eat hardy's filberts o gilbert the nut nut crackers with every bag hardy's french beans saved verdun try hardy's juicy cabbages they cure baldness the food controller recommends carrots try hearty's i have alfred hearty known as pineapple alf if you don't buy your vegetables from alfred hearty you will be what i am the last named was particularly appreciated everybody being able to see the joke and thinking that no one else had been so clever each took infinite pains to point it out to his neighbor at first mr hearty went very white then realizing that the crowd was laughing at him and that he was being rendered ridiculous he flushed crimson turning round he walked into the shop there was a feeling in his throat and eyes that reminded him of what he had felt as a child after a storm of crying his brain seemed deadened from out the general hum he heard a boy's shrill voice inquiring the whereabouts of his mate and the mate's reply was heard in the distance suddenly a new sensation dwarfed that of the donkeys here's another here's another yelled the shrill voice the crowd looked up the high street towards the bridge with stately lope a camel was pursuing its majestic way on its back was an enormous watermelon through which appeared the head of the driver shaded by leaves a double stock concealing his legs from the shelter of the double brass rail mr hardy watched the camel as if fascinated 
the donkeys had come to a standstill outside the shop behind him stood mrs bindle and smith the one very grim the other grinning expansively whilst from the gloom behind mrs hearty was heard wheezing and demanding what it was all about with stately and indifferent tread the camel approached with head poised rather like a snake about to strike slung over its back on each side were notices the one hearty first saw read i've got the hump through not buying hearty's vegetables as the beast swung round the other motto presented itself eat hearty's leeks they defy the plumber cheers catcalls loud whistlings and the talk of an eager excited saturday afternoon crowd formed a background to the picture well i'm blowed muttered bindle who had read the notices with keen relish well i'm blowed they done it in style the excitement was at its height when the steady pounding of a drum was heard in the distance as it drew nearer the attention of the crowd was attracted from the donkeys and the camel putney was in luck and it looked gratefully in the direction of where mr hardy stood a shadowy form behind his double brass rail bindle recognized the tune the band was playing as that of mr hardy's favorite hymn pull for the shore sailor as the band entered the high street another was heard in the opposite direction bindle turned into the shop and walked up to his brother-in-law who still stood staring at the strange and curious beasts that were advertising his wares look here hardy he said in his most official manner this may be all very well in the way of business but you're blocking the old bloomin high street mr hardy gazed at bindle with unseeing eyes these bands yours too hardy bindle inquired mr hardy shook his head in hopeless negation nothing was his not even the power to move and rout this scandalous zoological botanical exhibition well what are they a-playin hymns for demanded bindle hymns inquired mr hearty in a toneless voice yes can't you hear em bindle gazed at his brother-in-law curiously enough to blow your head orf the first band was now blaring out its pull for the shore sailor with full force at its head walked a man carrying a representation of a cabbage on which was painted hearty for cabbages the bandsmen wore strangely nondescript clothes with one exception they all seemed to possess the uniform cap that exception was a man in khaki four of them had caps without tunics only one had the full regulation uniform but he was wearing odd boots the bandmaster in a braided frock coat which reached well below his knees was spasmodically putting in bits on a cornet he was short of stature with a constricted wind and the pace was fast the second band approached the man at its head bearing a carrot with a similar legend as that of the rival concern but in relation to carrots onward christian soldiers was its melody the noise became diabolical the second band had uniform caps only and two of its members had taken off their coats and hung them over their shoulders it was a hot and tiring day at the moment when the second band was within a hundred yards of the shop the camel raised its head and gave vent to its terrifying roar a rather indifferent attempt to imitate that of a lion the onward christian soldiers band was the first to reach the shop having a shorter distance to traverse its leader was a tall man with a weary face and a still more weary moustache his waistcoat was unbuttoned and his face dripping with perspiration as he blew out what brains he possessed upon a silver cornet he marched straight up to the door of the shop blowing vigorously suddenly a double beat of the drum gave the signal to stop taking off his cap with the back of his hand he wiped the sweat from his brow pushing past mr hearty he entered a moment after followed by his eleven confreres for a moment mr hearty stared then he retreated backwards before the avalanche of musicians what do you want he demanded feebly this way upstairs governor inquired the tall man upstairs interrogated mr hearty yes upstairs like me to say it again queried the man who was tired and short-tempered but what began mr hearty oh go and roast yourself responded the man come along boys and they tramped through the back parlor mr hearty heard them pounding up the stairs the drum however refused to go through the narrow door the drummer tried it at every conceivable angle at last he recognized that he had met his waterloo yi charlie he yelled hello that you ted came the reply from above ruddy drum stuck yelled the drummer equally hot and exasperated 
what bawled charlie ready drum won't go up cried ted all right you stay down there you can hear us and keep time was the response the drummer subsided on to a sack of potatoes mr hearty approached him what are you doing here you're not my band he said eyeing the man apprehensively the drummer looked up with the insolence of a man who sees before him indecision oh the blank and buttercup said we was he demanded but what are you doing here persisted mr hearty oh responded the man with elaborate civility we come to play forfeits what you think at that moment from the room above the shop the band broke into full blast with shall we gather at the river the drummer made a grab at his sticks but was late and for the rest of the piece was a beat behind in all his bangs mr hardy looked helplessly about him another cheer from without caused him to walk to the door outside the pull for the shore sailor faction was performing valiantly their blood was up and they were determined that no one should gather at the river if they could prevent it in the distance several more bands were heard and the pounding became terrific all traffic had been stopped and an inspector of police was pushing his way through the crowd in the direction of mr hardy bindle joined the inspector saluting him elaborately the inspector eyed mr hardy with official disapproval you must send these men away sir he said with decision but but said mr hardy i can't but you must said the inspector there will be a summons of course he added warningly but why protested mr hardy the inspector looked at mr hardy and then gazed up and down putney high street he was annoyed you have blocked the whole place sir we've had to stop the trams coming round the putney bridge road hi he shouted to the drummer who was conscientiously earning his salary stop that confounded row there the man did not hear stop it i say shouted the inspector the drummer stopped what's the matter he inquired you're causing an obstruction said the inspector warningly ted yelled the voice of the leader at the top of the house who was gathering at the river upon the cornet in a fine frenzy what the hell are you stopping for it's the police yelled back ted informatively the cheese bawled back charlie shouldn't eat it it always makes you ill go ahead and bang that ruddy drum the leader was evidently determined not to bandy words with his subordinate he could be heard pounding down the stairs two at a time still doing his utmost to interpret the pleasures awaiting putney in the hereafter the cornet could be heard approaching nearer and nearer becoming brassier and brassier the leader was a note behind the rest by the time he had got to the bottom of the stairs arrived in the shop he stopped suddenly at the sight of the inspector tell them to stop that infernal row ordered the officer he who had been addressed as charlie looked from mr hearty to the inspector there ain't no law that can stop me he said with decision i'm on the enclosed premises go ahead ted he commanded turning to the drummer take it out of her and resuming his cornet charlie picked up the tune and raced up the stairs again leaving ted taking it out of her in a way that more than made up for the time he had lost the inspector bit his lip turning to mr hearty he said you will be charged with causing obstruction with all this tomfoolery but but it isn't mine protested mr hearty weakly i know nothing about it nonsense said the inspector look at those animals out there mr hearty looked and then looked back at the inspector who said something but mr hearty could only see the movement of his lips the babble became almost incredible three more bands had arrived making five altogether and there was a sound in the distance that indicated the approach of others for the first time in his life ted was experiencing the sweets of being able legally to defy the law and he was enjoying to the full a novel experience at that moment mrs bindle pushed her way into the shop she had been out to get a better view of what was taking place she stopped and stared from mr hearty to the inspector and then back to mr hearty i i don't know what it means he stammered feeling that something was required of him but no one heard him bindle who had hitherto been quiet in the presence of his superior officer now took a hand in matters look here hardy he shouted during a lull in the proceedings advertisement's advertisement and very nice too but this here's obstruction ain't that right sir he said addressing the inspector but the inspector did not hear him it was doubtful if mr hardy heard for at that moment there had turned into the high street from wandsworth bridge road 
a double drummed band playing something with a slight resemblance to gospel bells a melody that gives a wonderful opportunity for the trombones there were now one band upstairs and five in the high street as near to the shop as they could muster and a seventh approaching all were striving to interpret moody and sankey as moody and sankey had never been interpreted before the inspector walked out on to the pavement and vainly strove to signal to two of his men whose helmets could be seen among the crowd mr hardy's eyes followed the officer but soon he became absorbed in other things from the wimbledon end of high street he saw bobbing about in the crowd a number of brilliant green caps with yellow braid upon them the glint of brass in their neighbourhood forewarned him that another band was approaching from the bobbing movement of the caps it was obvious that the men were fighting their way in the direction of his mr hardy's shop glancing in the other direction mr hardy saw a second stream of dark green and red caps likewise making for him when the leader of the green and yellow caps a good-natured little man carrying a cornet burst through the crowd it was like spring breaking in upon winter the brilliant green tunic with its yellow braid was dazzling in the sunlight and mr hardy blinked his eyes several times at day sir said the little man genially as he took off his cap and with the edge of his forefinger removed the sweat from his brow giving it a flick that sent some of the moisture on to mr hardy causing him to start back suddenly sorry sir said the man apologetically afraid i splashed you i suppose we go right through and up come along razor he yelled to the last of his bandsmen a thin weedy youth who was still vainly endeavouring to cut his way through the crowd suddenly the little man saw the first drummer banging away vigorously hello got another little lot inside you don't know half how to advertise mister he said admiringly this reminded mr hearty that he possessed a voice there is some mistake i have not ordered any band he shouted in the little man's ear what shouted the little man mr hearty repeated his assurance not ordered any band seem to have ordered all the bands in london as far as i can see he remarked looking at the rival concerns sort of crystal palace affair you ordered us anyhow he added but i didn't persisted mr hearty this is all a mistake oh ring orf said the leader people don't pay in advance for what they don't want come along boys he cried and pushing his way along the shop he passed through the parlour door and was heard thumping upstairs you can't get through shouted ted to the second drummer a mournful-looking man with black whiskers what he bawled dully can't get through yelled ted why roared the whiskered man ruddy drum won't go up shouted ted oh said the second drummer and without testing the accuracy of ted's words he seated himself upon a barrel of apples his drum still in position there was a sound of loud altercations from above after a minute they subsided and the volume of tone increased showing that charlie had found expression in his cornet where's striker came the cry striker yelled several voices hello howled striker in a muffled voice we're all ready what the hell are you doing striker came the response rum won't come up bawled striker what rum won't come up too big right oh you can pick us up came the leader's reply a moment later onward christian soldiers broke out in brassy rivalry to shall we gather at the river mrs hearty and mrs bindle fled into the parlour it is obvious that whatever phenomenon eternity may have to discover to man it will not be christian soldiers gathering at the river the noise was stupendous the stream of brassy discord that descended from above was equalled only by the pounding of the two drums that rose from below ted had made some reflections upon the whiskers of the second drummer with the result that forgetting the respective bands they were now engaged in a personal contest thumping and pounding against each other with both sticks the sweat poured down their faces and their mouths were working each expressing opinions which however the other could not hear at that moment the dark green caps with red braid began to trickle into the shop bindle who had been a delighted spectator of the arrival of band after band suggested to the leader of the eighth band in a roar that just penetrated to the drum of his ear hadn't you better start here there ain't no room upstairs the man gave a comprehensive look around then by signs indicated to his men that they were to start then and there 
they promptly broke out into the last noel bindle ran from the shop his fingers in his ears oh my god they'll bring the old bloomin house down he muttered i hope they don't play ems in evan them drums mr hearty who had been pushed into a corner behind an apple barrel stood and gazed about him there was a dazed look in his eyes as of one who does not comprehend what is taking place he looked as if at any moment he might become a gibbering lunatic a wild cheer from the crowd attracted his attention he looked out pushing their way toward the shop was a number of vegetables a carrot a turnip a cabbage a tomato a cucumber a potato a marrow to name only a few each seemed to be on legs and was playing an instrument of some description was he mad could that really be a melon playing the drum did bananas play cornets could cucumbers draw music from piccolos mr hardy blinked his eyes here indeed was a dream a nightmare he saw bindle with an inspector and a constable turn the vegetables back obviously denying them admission he watched as one who has no personal interest in the affair he saw the inspector enter with three constables he saw the green and red band ejected ted and the whiskered man silenced charlie and the short genial man brought down protesting from upstairs he saw the inspector's busy pencil fly from side to side of his notebook he saw bindle grinning cheerfully as he exchanged remarks with the bandsmen he saw what looked like a never-ending procession of bandsmen stream past him he saw everything he believed nothing perhaps it was brain fever he had worked very hard over his new shop if he were to die smith could never carry on the three businesses what would become of them he further knew that his afternoon trade was ruined that he would probably be summoned for something that he had not done and tears came to his eyes in mr hardy's soul was nothing of the patience and long-suffering of the martyr behind him above him and in front of him he still seemed to hear the indescribable blare of brass outside were the cheers of the crowd and the vain endeavors of the police to grapple with the enormous problem that had been set them what could it all mean in the kitchen behind the parlor sat mrs hearty wheezing painfully opposite to her stood mrs bindle tight-lipped and grim that bindle's done this she muttered to herself it'll kill mr hearty end of chapter five read by don w jenkins rancho san diego california shaggybark.blogspot.com